Good morning. Welcome to uh, the throne room, the Azanya edition of the iconic international and indispensable Queen Mother. Um, as you all know, it was really touching how very few people know about African states, so I decided to do something about it and just stimulate people's minds and get them, you know, using Google to research about African states. Right, so this week, the country that we're going to be having a chat about. Is Togo. Um, Togo is a phenomenal country. I really love this country with all of me. Um, they were on um, they were on the headlines. They were on the headlines towards the end of last year because last year was a very interesting year for the country. It was um, election year. And um, as you can see, the president ran his fourth term and won a landslide victory. And what's very important about last year's election is they elected the first female prime minister. And her name is Victoria Tomage Dogbe. So let's give a round of applause to that. She holds a master's degree in economics and management and diploma in marketing. I first heard about her um, when she was still working for the United Nations Development Program. She's a well-respected development strategist. I mean, she can, you know, she creates a machine that, a well-oiled machine that can run even in her absence. Um, she was chief of staff of to to the Togolese uh, president and she was, also, she was also director general and she also has served the country as Minister of Youth and Grassroots Development. Obviously, I mean, with her expertise, she's a very, she's a key asset to the country. The natural and human geography of the country. Okay, let's have a chat about that. Um, Togo is a neighboring country to Benin. Uh, Benin is a country we spoke about last week. So if you haven't watched it, check it out, episode two. Um, and uh, also it's a neighboring country to Ghana and Burkina Faso. Um, it's a small country that's along the bite of Benin. Um, and the features that, you know, when you go to the country, you need to look at ones like Togo, the Togo Mountains, the Mono River, the Okachi Plateau, and the Daupun Cliffs. The capital city of Togo is known, it's a coastal city. And there's five regions that are administrative regions, and that's the Central, the Kara, the Maritime, Plateau, and Southern. Okay. Very little English is spoken in, in uh, Togo. Um, if you go there and you think you speak English, you might need a translator because the official language is French, and the other languages that are spoken there are Iwe, um, Wachi, and Kabie. Um, what you also need to know. So it was actually not a French name. It's an, it was named after Iwe language and it means water show. Right, I got your feedback <laughs> last week. I know I get carried away and I really, really like, think it's important to know um, the history of something so you know where it's going and understand its behavior now. But and we're not diagnosing the country, right? We're not giving a political analysis. So I'm not gonna go into great detail. I'm gonna just give you something brief, like I promise it'll be brief. Um, what you need to know is um, Togo became independent in 1960. And uh, the first president of the country is Salvani Olympia. He was assassinated two years into his reign as president. Moment of silence. And uh, he had an interim leader in his place and that was Nicholas Stravinsky. Uh, Nicholas Stravinsky then was uh, pushed out by Gassimbe Adiyeme um, in 1967 in a bloodless coup, no violence, no, they just took him out um, as president. And uh, Gassimbe reigned over the country. And, and a notable thing that he did in his presidency was nationalize phosphate. 
the nationalized phosphate. Now remember that. And in 2003, when he was supposed to, you know, you can't have his second term, he challenged the constitution and uh, he became president for his third term. Unfortunately, in 2005, he passed away um, at age 69 and the military then put his son, Fori Gassini, um, as president and Fori has been president ever since 2005. Um, he then succumbed to international pressure at the same year, 2005. And um, he did elections. Unfortunately, 400 to 500 people were deceased in um, political violence, which is very unfortunate. Um, and then um, he followed in his father's footsteps. In 2019, he managed to challenge the constitution and extend his presidency till about 2030. So he might still be talking about him as president of the country. But one great thing that he did was he let his opposition leader um, in one of his uh, elections um, be a prime minister. That was a noble thing to do. Um, the politics of the country is very interesting. On, on paper, we could say that it is a presidential republic because the people do vote. But the way things are, like you could say it's a monarchy because, um, you know, when, when someone dies, you put in their sons, it's sort of like a monarchy, but actually it's a presidential republic in, in on paper. They have an executive, which is uh, the head of state, who's the president, head of government, which is the prime minister. And then you have um, a cabinet of ministers who work with the president and the executive, excuse me. And um, they have a legislative branch, which consists of 91 seats. Um, and uh, a judiciary, judicial branch that has the Supreme Court and Constitutional Court. So many questions about the Constitutional Court because I feel like, you know, it favors whoever's in power and the Constitutional Court is supposed to be separate from the executive and it's supposed to be actually uh, the voice of reason and independent voice of reason for the country and protecting the Constitution at all costs. So it can't be the break to the executive, but that's a chat for another day. Um, but the real reason why I think in watching this video is to understand Togo as it relates to the world. Um, Togo is very important in the world because it's the fourth largest producer of phosphate. Phosphate is so important, guys, that I don't think I said phosphate is an important resource in the country, in, in the world. Um, in our everyday use, it's used as fertilizer, as matches, poison corroded and an alloy in tins, uh, copper tins and um, iron tins and more. Another interesting thing is because of uh, the country, agriculture is a big thing as well. They have, they produce cassava, yams, maize, millet, sorghum, cocoa, and, and cotton, plastic and plastic material, cement as well and cotton. So, they're very important, and it's, it's, I really hope that like you take time to Google and learn about this country because it's close to my heart, and it's very important to know where everything produced comes from. Tune in next week uh, for um, for the Azania edition. Also, super excited! I'm so excited. May is African Month, so I just want to know: Would you like me to double up? Do two countries a week during Africa month um, and uh, be good to one another. Kind to yourself. You were with the Queen and uh, enjoy your day. Thank you so much for